Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial for beginners. In today's video, we're going to talk about list method. There are various different methods that we can use with a list class, and let's talk about some of the most frequently used ones in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. So as you see in the screen right now, I've categorized the list method into three different groups so that we can actually talk about similar method as a group. So in the group one, we have append, extend, and insert. So let's start with the append method. But before I actually get into that, let me briefly talk about what list method is. So the list method, I'm referring to all the methods that the list class holds. And as we talked about in the string method video, you can see all the methods available in the list class by typing the help command, help list. And if we run this, you will be able to see all the methods that the class list holds. So if you scroll down a bit, you're going to see uh, various different methods, which we're going to talk about in today's video. OK, so now let's talk about the append method. So it appends a new element to the end of the list. So I'm going to create a new list, list1, and set that equal to 1, 2, 3. And then we can do list1.append4. And if you want to see the result, you have to print this out, so list1. So what we are doing here is that we are actually considering this list1 variable that holds the list data type as a list class. And in order for you to actually access the method within the list class, the only thing that you have to do is to call the list class dot append. So by printing the dot here, you can access all the methods that the list class hold. So I'm calling the append method from the list class, and I'm trying to add the element 4 into the end of the list. So if we print this out, you will see one, two, three, four in the same list. And so the four actually got added into the end of the list in the list one. And we can also try to add another list into the list one that we have. So we can do list one dot append bracket four. So what we are doing here is that we are actually adding a new list into the existing list with the element of four. So if you want to see the result, we have to print this out. And if I run this, you will see one, two, three, four with a nested list that has a four. So the thing about the append is that it actually maintains the data type that you are adding into the existing list. So in this case, I added a new list into the list one. That's why you are seeing the nested list. I can also try to add another data type like tuple, like one, two, three. And if I run this one more time, you will see one, two, three, four with a tuple, one, two, three. And we can also try to add a string data type like one, two, three and run it you will see 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3 as a string. So the key thing about the append is that it always adds a new element into the end of the list, and it maintains the data type of the element that you are appending. OK, so now let's talk about the extend method. So extend method adds all elements in an iterable to the end of the list. So I'm going to create a two variable. So list 1, 1, 2, 3 and list 2, and 4, 5, 6. So if I were to call the extend method on the list 1, and then put the list 2 as the argument, then the extend method will parse out all the elements in the list 2, and then add it to the end of the list 1. So let me call the extend method, so list 1.extend list 2. And if you want to see the result, we have to print the list 1 out. And if I run this, you will see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all within a single list. So the extend method parsed out all the elements in the list 2 and then added it to the end of the list 1. And as I specified in the description here, it not only works in the list data type, but also works in other data type that we can consider it as iterable, such as tuple, dictionary, list, string, and so on. So what this means here is that we can actually pass different data type into the argument slot here. So let me create a tuple 1 and 1, 2, 3. And then let me also create string one and then set it as ABC. So if I pass the tuple one here, the extend method will actually parse out all the elements in this tuple and then add it to the end of the list one. So let me run this. So you will see one, two, three and one, two, three, which is the expected behavior. And if I put the string one here and then run it, so you will see one, two, three, ABC. So each character in the string one was separated out and then it was added to the end of the list one. And we also talked about using the plus operator between two lists in the previous video. So the extend method and using the plus operator between two lists works exactly the same. So let me comment this. So I can just do a print list one plus list two. And then if I run this, 
you will see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is the same result as calling the extend method on the list 1 to list 2. And this does not work if you try to put the different data type because obviously you cannot combine one data type to another without the data type conversion. And so the main difference between the append and extend here is that the append method maintains the data type of the element that you are adding to the end of the list, while the extend method does not maintain the data type, meaning that it just parses out whatever the elements that you have within the iterable data type and then add it to the end of the list where you call the extend method on. So the last method that we're going to talk about in this group is the insert method. So the insert method allows you to insert a new element into the specified location based on the index. So let me create a new variable list 1, a, b, and c. And let's say that I want to insert a new element in between a and b. In this case, I can just call insert method and specify the index, which is the one, and then specify the new element that you want to insert, D. And if I print this out, print list one, and then run it, you will see A, D, B, C, which is the expected location, because we are inserting the element D into the index of one, which is here, and so that B and C will shift to the right, and that's why we are seeing the A, D, B, C. Let me also try to add a new element into the beginning of the list. So we can just do list one dot insert and then specify the beginning of the index, which is zero. And then I want to say AA. And if I just print this out and run it, you will see AA, ABC. Okay, so for group two, we're going to talk about remove, pop, and clear method. So the first method that we're going to talk about is the remove method. So as the name says it, it's going to remove an element from the list. So let me first create the list here, list 1, A, B, and C. And let's say that I want to remove the element B. Then all we have to do is just call the list 1.remove and then specify the element that we want to remove, in this case B, and print this out. And if we were to run this, you will see A and C. And similarly, we can use a pop method to remove an element from the list. So let's talk about the pop. So by default, pop method removes the last element from the list, but you can also specify the index of the element that you want to remove. So let me first copy this and then comment this line of code and then paste it here. And then, so if I just call the list one.pop without specifying any argument and then just print the list one out. And if I run this, you will see A and B, so the last element C by default was removed. But you can also specify the index of the element that you want to remove. So let's say that you want to remove the A here, then you can just specify the index of zero and then run it one more time. Then you will see B and C, so the element A was removed. So the main difference between the remove and pop method is that the remove actually takes the actual element as the argument to remove that element from the list, while the pop method by default does not take any argument. Instead, it just automatically removes the last element from the list. And also the pop method can take the index of the element that you want to remove as the argument, as you see here. And lastly, there is one important difference between the remove and pop. So the pop method by default returns the element that's being removed. So for example, if I set this list one.pop as a separate variable, like the removed item equal to list one dot pop and then just print this out and if we run this you will see a here so the element a is the item that's currently being removed as the result of the call for the pop method so the pop method actually returns the element that's currently being removed while the remove method does not return anything so if i just uncomment this one more time and then do the same thing removed item equal to list one dot remove and then print removed oops removed item and then if i were to just run this one more time then at the very top you will see none and this is an expected behavior because the method remove does not return anything that's why when you print the removed item it actually returns none and so now let's talk about the clear method so the clear method as the name says it it clears out all the elements in the list so let's say that we have a list one with a one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then if I just call the clear method, which does not take any argument, and if I just print list one again, and if you just run this, you will see the empty list because it cleared out all the elements in the list. So we can actually generate the same result using the there keyword and using the list slicing and indexing. So let's talk about that real quick. So I'm gonna comment this and we're gonna use the there keyword. 
and then list one square bracket colon so the square bracket column basically means that we are actually slicing all the elements within this list one and then the del keyword just tells us that we're going to actually delete everything that's specified afterward so if i just print this out print list one and then run it you will see an empty list as well okay so now we are almost done here we are at the group three and in this group we're going to talk about com reverse sort index and copy method so let's first start with the com method here so the count method counts the number of elements found in the list. So let's say that we have a list with some duplicate values. So I'm going to say A, oops, B, C, and another A here. And let's say that I want to actually count the element A found in the list 1. Then I can just do list1.count and specify the element, which is A, and print. Actually, we have to actually set this as a variable count, and then the print count and if I run this you will see two here because the element a was found two times in the list one and we can also try to count the element that does not exist like four and then if I run this one more time it's gonna return zero because four is not found in the list one okay so now let's move on to the reverse method reverse so the reverse method reverse all the elements in the list so let's say that we have a list one with one, two, three, and one, two, three. And if I call the reverse method on the list one, so reverse and print list one. And if I were to run this, you will see a three to one, three to one, which is a complete reverse of the elements that we have in the list one. And we can also generate the same result using the slicing and indexing. So let me first comment this and we can do a print list one square bracket colon colon minus one so as we talked about in the last video in here we did not specify any start or the stop index so that it's gonna actually try to slice out everything however we specify the stride as minus one so it's gonna start from the backward so when we run this you will actually see the same result three to one and three to one Okay, so moving on to the next method, sort. So the sort method sorts the element in the list either in ascending order or in descending order. So I have a two lists already created for you here. So the list one contains all the integer values and list two contains all the string values. So if you want to use the sort method, we cannot really mix and match the integer and string together because it doesn't make sense to sort integer and string together. So let me show you the sort method in the list one in an ascending order. So we can do list one dot sort and just print list one. And if I print this out, you will see all the integers sorted in the ascending order. And we can also do the same thing in the list2. So list2.sort and then print list2. And if I print this out, you will see all the characters in the alphabetical order. And we can also sort in a descending order. So all we need to do in this case is just specify a keyword argument, reverse, and set that equal to true. And if I run this one more time, you will see the integer sorted in a descending order and we can also apply that to the string reverse equal true and then run it one more time you will see all the characters in a reverse alphabetical order here and the sorting method takes another keyword argument called key but i think that we're going to talk about that functionality in later videos because it requires some other knowledge for us to actually fully utilize it okay so moving on to the next method the index method so the index method returns the index of the first occurrence of an element found in the list. So let me create a list here. So I'm going to say A and B, C and also A, B and C. So let's say that I want to find the index of the element C found in the list 1. Then we can just do list 1.index and specify the element which is C and let's specify this as a variable so we can just do index equal list one dot index and we can do print index and if we run this you will see two here because the first occurrence of the element c found in the list one has the index of two so zero one and two so it only returns the first occurrence of an element found in the list one so we can also try to put a here and if i run this one more time it's gonna return zero because the first occurrence of the A found in the list one is at the index of zero. And we can also restrict our search range by defining the start and stop position in the index method. So let's say that we want to actually search 
the occurrence of A within this range here, this uh, second half of the ABC, then we can say that we want to actually start from index of 3, which is this A here, and then we want to stop at here, but since the stop index is exclusive, we have to actually point to here, which has the index of 6, and then if we run this, you will see a 3 here, because the index of 3 is the first occurrence of the A found, given the range that we specified in the index method. Okay, so finally to the last method for today's video, the copy method. So the copy method creates a new list with a copy value from another list. So let me first create a list here. So list 1, set it equal to 1, 2, and 3. And some of you may think that if you want to copy the value from the list 1 to different variable like list 2, then all you have to do is just basically set the list 2, set it equal to list 1. And this is somewhat true in a sense that the list 1 and list 2 will now have the two exactly same value 1, 2, 3. So let's print that out. So list 1, comma, list 2. And if we run this, you will see a two exactly same result here. But the thing here is that if you try to add a new element into the list 1, both the list 1 and list 2 will be updated. So let me show you that. List 1.append full and print the list 1 and list 2 one more time. You will again see a two exactly same result even though you only added the element 4 into the list 1. And this is an expected behavior because list 1 and list 2 are the same object. Because in here you are creating a list 2 variable and setting it equal to the list 1 object. And we can easily check that by calling the id function that we have talked about id list 1 and id list 2. So the id function will return the location of the memory for the list 1 and list 2. So if I run this, you will see a two exactly same memory location, meaning that the list 1 and list 2 are indeed the same object. And this is where the copy method can come in handy. So let me first comment this out. And let's use the copy method. So I'm going to create a new variable list 2. And then I'm going to call the copy method. So list 1.copy parenthesis. And so if I do print list 1, comma, list 2, you will see a two exactly same values, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. But this time, if I try to add a new element only to the list 1, let's see what happens. So list 1.append full, and print this out one more time. And if I run this, you will see a 1, 2, 3, 4 for the list 1, but you will see 1, 2, 3 for the list 2. So this time, only list 1 was updated as we specified here. And this clearly indicates that the list 1 and list 2 are the different objects. So let's check that again. So print id list 1 and id list 2. And if I run this, you will see a two different memory location here because list 1 and list 2 are the two separate objects. So the key here is that the copy method will always create a new list and that the new list that you create is actually the different object from the list that you are copying from. Okay guys, that's it for this video. So we talked about the various different list method today with its use cases and things to consider when using the list method. I hope that this video is helpful and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to comment down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, please click the subscribe and like button. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in next videos.